All right. And now we're officially live. And uh, here we go at Mark. What is it? Mark's not here. All right. 9.01 a.m. here. So 8 a.m. Pacific. And uh, this is the Microsoft Community Office Hours. Myself, Christian Buckley. I'm here with Sean McDonough and Eric Riz. And we should have Hal and Mike should be showing up. And maybe Neil. Maybe some Hal, other people. Hal's our new septuagenarian. He just had a birthday. Turned 70. Oh, that's right. Wow. And he was going out to get some sort of Mexican meal for it or something. Maybe whatever he tweeted back to me or replied back well, to me. It apparently didn't go well because he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Too hot to handle. Yeah. We had some amazing Twitter. I had some amazing Twitter back. Buck, I think you, you actually started it because there was some tweeting about the, the Microsoft 260. 65 maturity model. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that was all your fault. <laughs> I did a, a tweet typo and and uh, 265. I put 265. And somebody is like corrected. It's like it should be 365. I'm like 265, 365, 365 whatever, it takes. whatever it takes. Yes, yeah. of course. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's fantastic. So between between me, Gil Ronan, um, who else got in on it? It was it was a whole thing. Uh, Mark Anderson was in on it for a while. It was just a production and a half. So first, first I said, well, you know, we, we may overachieve and aim for 465. And then, and then there was mention of 365. And, and I said, we're only covering 66%. And then Mark <laughs> and talked about the percentage and it's 72 point X. And it was just, it was just on like hours of my day were lost last week because of it. Yeah. I just uh, had Ver Verosky and I were just talking about, uh, Horses End, uh, you know, revival and doing something. Yeah. And we're we're, we're jo rocks. joking about we're we're joking about that. And we Jeff and I usually when we get going on Facebook or on a direct message on Twitter, you know, we just we go down that rat hole too of just obscure inside joke to uh, get to the point where we forget what we were talking about <laughs> talking about at the beginning. There were no obscure inside jokes in this last week. It was. It was all relevant and contextual, I have to say. I think Vorosky lives in obscure joke land. I mean, That's he's true. a total regular resident, never comes out. Yeah. Well, he, he's, uh, he, he's uh, I don't know, e evolving into uh, woodshop teacher slash maker slash metal creations like, as well. I was he's like, are you retired? Do you do actual work, like? tech job work stuff now or you're just doing woodworking i mean the new, england, the new england is seeping into him finally i mean he's got his very crafty wife M, who does incredible things and i think he's just trying to fall suit and follow suit yeah but yeah he's created some incredible wood stuff and then i think he's done some metal work and it's like i maybe he's going there's a place uh, in southern massachusetts called old sturbridge village um which is um a place you can go and it's like uh, they've got the iron workers and they've got everybody dressed up in uh, olden days and kind of uh, everybody's living the I don't even know what era of time it was but it was lots of pewter and that sort of thing and all sorts of crafts people I think Verosky is looking for a job transition sometime soon so look for the move to southern Massachusetts along the uh, Connecticut border it's coming watch that. He from Connecticut. Yeah. I'm from Connecticut too. This guy, I did not know that. Yeah. Well, we won't hold him. <laughs> Riz, you're from you're from Connecticut. We're about true story. Uh, born at Hartford Hospital, lived in Simsbury. Okay, I was born in Norwalk, down in southwestern corner, Metro New York area, just east of Greenwich and whatnot and then uh, spent some time in Naugatuck by Waterbury so I've hopped around the state a bit yeah you got around I know what you're saying so I've been told born and raised in, born and raised in Oakland California Woo that explains a lot yeah thank you it's just the obvious thing to say it actually explains yeah <laughs> 
All right. Hey, so we are going. So if you're watching the live stream, um, uh, feel free to. What's that? Just random ding. I know what that thing was. Okay. That was the unmistakable ding of the Himmelstein. Was it? Yeah. The microwave went off. <laughs> the ding your, uh, of the your hot pocket is ready, Eric. It was the ding uh, of the Himmelstein. Yeah, so if you're watching Let's the live stream. Let's hot pocket, okay? <laughs> hot pockets. If, if you have questions, uh, feel free to ask them in the uh, in the live stream. We're monitoring in a couple different places. And uh, you can post them out to the Office 365 community out on Facebook. Uh, we're, we're pulling questions from that community as well as the Microsoft Teams pages. And we've got quite a few to go through this morning. And I, and I have some that I've, uh, and I numbered them this time. Did. Um, you noticed that. That was a great uh, job. We're really evolving here as a people. Uh, I know. Um, uh, but I, I do have some, so a couple of items queued up for Hal. So hopefully he joins us uh, in a little bit here. Um, but uh, let me just make sure everything is, that's all going. All right. So let's just, let's jump into it and see what happens. Um, so Mario, number question number one, Mario has a question. When in the tenant, the main domain is changed. All links that I shared on channels on Teams, those preserve some old URL, is exists some way to fix this issue. I appreciate any kind of help or solution regards. I love the brevity of the, of the question. The lack of punctua uh, punctuation makes it a little confusing. Um, I think I but more. I think I need some more coffee because I read this three times, and each time I read the name as Marlon Brando. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened. That's your takeaway from this. The coffee isn't strong enough. I just well, wanted to get. It. Usually, I'd wait until the end of question four to mention this. But so I, can, I want can to you do a Marlon Brando interpretation? Can you do a reading of the question in the Marlon Brando? I don't have any marbles to shove in my mouth. I, I can't do that. That's one that I can't do and certainly would never do online and have it be recorded. I don't think it's going to help us with the question. I'm, I'm trying to ascertain when the main domain is changed. When the this domain is, is changed in the tenant, uh, all the links that I change on Teams. Okay, so they preserved. added another domain to the tenant. Maybe you're using that instead. I, I'm... What I'm trying to understand is, you know, is this, I think it's a tenant problem. It's not a team's problem. I mean, I don't know that the one answer I would have that might approach something viable is I don't know that you're going to be able to change the URLs or fix those up because link fix up inside of SharePoint is a notorious problem. There is a variety of third party tools that attempt to do this and go varying levels deep. But if it's an issue of, you know, links going to an old domain, um, I would I would suggest a DNS fix and just set yourself up with a redirect, a garden redirect for anything coming to that domain to the new one. Um, so that's different angles on this question but i mean am i even thinking what you guys are thinking along the same lines like i'm trying to make heads or tails of this and it seems like every time i read it i think something else yeah i think i, I kind of where you started was needing to have a little more information from mario uh, on that you know if you were i mean my first thought was are you switching tenants that, I don't think that's it. I think so it's an actual change to the domain um, into that same team in the same location. If you've made changes to that, then obviously it doesn't auto change any of the links in the URLs. Yeah. Is it a relevant mocking that you're seeing? Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rob Foster. <laughs> uh, that's that's hilarious. You rock. <laughs> I'm always yeah, praying for donuts. I think if you make any changes there, it, it uh, yeah, it, you, you, I'm again not sure about the specific example here, um, but essentially you keep collaborating going forward. But it can't. It, it's still 
those links are back to that old domain. Um, it's almost like you've kind of frozen, you've archived in place uh, guys, those old links. But Mario, sorry, if you, a, I'm sorry, Eric. Go ahead. I can wait until question five or six if you want and just chime in. I, okay? I just had one thing to add. Mario, if you do get back to us on this, <laughs> um, a screenshot with uh, pointers and whatnot would probably help us uh, establish context a whole lot better than a written description. But um, go ahead, Riz. Thanks. Um, I the, see the floor to Riz. The, the floor, the chair recognizes. I reclaim my time. I uh, reclaim my time. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to defer to, anyway. Uh, what's our email address? Office hours at cloudtalk.com? Yes. Yeah. So, Marlon, if you want to email Mario, I'm, Mario. If, you if you don't appreciate that, I am doing it intentionally. I know your name is Mario, but it's, it's for our entertainment. He says it's saying. intentional. He's trying to save face, Mario. You know, whatever works. Yeah. Um, I, I did already get some fanfare that very entertained by today's show. So, all good. Uh, Mario, if you want to drop an email with, with that information, screenshot, whatnot. I had a client who, who ran into this in February and for the life of me, I wasn't involved in the, the fix, so for the life of me, I can't recall what we did. But if you email the group, I can respond and uh, try to help you out. we we'll track it down. Yeah, that's a, that's a great um, plug there again for the office hours at collabtalk.com. If there's any questions that we don't, we don't capture the day, we are responding to stuff all week long. Um, so, so feel free to drop them in. And, and if anything that we've not answered already during the week that we might you know, add into the Monday's questions, and we're uh, doing this every Monday at 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Pacific. If like up there, Christian, back. Christian, if um, if if they contacted us slash you with a specific question, and we're merely guiding towards the email address, is it actually considered a plug, or is it just this is how you contact us for more information? So I wouldn't think that's a plug. You're making a mention. It was it was a mini advertisement for the email address. Yes, I'm just making a mess. Is what I'm making. But that's besides the point. The yeah. Yeah. What's Danger Noodle? Oh yeah, we have yeah. Let's do T-shirts. Well, you you saw my my past one, which had the murder log with the crocodile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is part of the series. So it's a Danger Noodle. It's a snake. Yeah. Just more geek humor. I'm wearing the uh, the gravy neck today. Would that be the plain solid gravy neck? Sure. Yeah, it's a different kind of funny. Yes, I think it's. I think this is that more of a Heather, if you will. Yeah. Mm. But mm. you know, she never admits it. That's all that matters. Yeah. True. All right. Question number two from Nate. Uh, new to teams. Question about Teams live events. Uh, is it free? How can I test it out? Does it work well? And I and I and I know that's just kind of a generic question out there. I thought it was a good opportunity for us to share some of our experiences with using live events versus. I've not teams tried events. it, so this is all you guys. Yeah, Eric, you want to go first? Sure. Been there, done that. Um, not the most amazing experience with it. Uh, it was pretty choppy, difficult to um, difficult to work through. There's also a bit of a dependency on um, someone to sort of help out along the way. Which is it free? Well, free as anything, teams. I mean, you you have to have those licenses in there, but well, yeah. yeah, free for a while. No cost on top. Or added no yeah so you can use it um but er i think eric you, you similar path but i just renewed yesterday renewed my annual license for zoom webinars uh and there's a reason why i went ahead and paid for that do you want to share what that reason is or no because they sent them a bill it's deeply personal <laughs> yes. no it's um so it's uh, for what Eric, what you just said. I mean, it's it, it's, uh, it's choppy. I've had it's it's a bit of a pain to do, especially when you're individual trying to run a webinar. It's best when there's a person producing and somebody that's just participating. If you have 
more than one presenter. It's a pain in the arse um, to for, for relinquishing control and moving around. You lose the controls. You're, you're constantly like, oh, it's gone again. Oh, I see him. Yeah, you know, there's just a, it, it's it's a bit of a mess that way. I, I always use the phrase not yet ready for prime time. It's acceptable if you're doing a broadcast out with a producer and a speaker or a single producer slash speaker out to an audience. But if you're trying to do something more interactive, then you either do it in a meeting, a team's meeting. Um, if you're trying to do something that's with anonymous access and blast it out there, then I'm still going with a third party webinar platform. It's just more stable, the quality is higher, there are more features. And uh, and I, I would love to not have to pay that other bill uh, and get it all in one. It's just, it's I need something that works today. Yeah. But I think you, you said a lot by saying that you, you opted for the annual subscription and not the month to month subscription. Um, right. Because, I mean, look, if I put on my, my Microsoft hat very quickly, uh, which I don't actually have here, but I probably have a couple lanyards over there. Um, you know, Microsoft has thrown together two years of, of technology in two months. So the, the word is that they're working hard to get it to its next level of video conferencing and, and conference level platform. It's just not there yet. But I would say it's month to month, not year to year in terms of when I'd expect to see something more solid because they know exactly which market they're trying to capture. They just haven't gotten there yet. I, I did the math. I, I, I look at when with Ignite coming up and the, just the, the, in the fiscal year and with the discount I got for the annual, th there's a reason why I, I did that versus month to month when I think it's going to be ready. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things that even when I was a Microsoft employee uh, over 10 years ago, I mean, I, I um, got yelled at occasionally for not dog fooding. Um, because I was doing stuff that was client facing and I got tired of my laptop quitting on me and things breaking in the middle of meetings. I'm like, I can't work like this. Like, I'm sorry, I know we're supposed to test things out and provide that feedback, but it was stopping me from getting work done. And I can't- The cost can't, of, I, I the can't cost of dog fooding is more to your relationship than it benefits from the use of the actual product. Right. So yes. it's, uh, and I know there's a lot of people that will do, do dog fooding, they'll have, there are two systems. They'll have their dog fooding laptop and the one that they can fall back on. And I mean, as my primary workstation here, I just don't have that luxury to do that. And that's why I have a MacBook Pro. It's not a PC versus Mac. True story. It's always a PC versus Mac story. <laughs> I had just yeah. a story. I had a I had a Surface two or three or whatever it was, completely overheat, blue screen, then black screen, and die while on stage in New York City a couple years ago. And that was the end of that. Yeah. I had to go from there to Barcelona for a different show. And it was not good. And he needed to get a new cup of coffee afterwards. You know, I've not had any problems. I think I have a three. I've not had any problems. I mean, I, I know about... Uh, you know, people reporting those issues, not having any, any of those issues my surface. I, I really like it. I had a Dell that I loved and I was uh, presenting in Melbourne and uh, the monitor went out and didn't come back on that. And it was, it was the, it was the, the problem with just the, the format. It was a touch screen, you know, folding, fold over screen. Love that device. Uh, but the, uh, uh, the, um, the video card, which was like welded onto the motherboard, went bad. And so what do you do? The only thing you do is because it's permanently adhered, you have to replace the laptop. And uh, it was a beefy laptop and was sad to see that thing go. It's actually, uh, it's doing a second life right now. My son has got it down at college and is using it. Um, it occasionally, the screen goes out. Um, and so he, so he usually he uses it at home with a second monitor. And so it's not an issue for that. If it goes out, it just needs to be shut completely and then opened up again and it will come back on, but not good for the road warrior 
device to have that something happen. more reliable yeah. than that. Yeah. On, yep. on that on that day, basically, just I took a step forward, I shut the laptop, and I just did my entire session without any visual aids, PowerPoint. And, and you know what? It actually works. I, I did that in Melbourne as well. And somebody yeah. said that that was, they said, I knew exactly what you're talking about. That was, yeah, it was a full room of me doing, I did the, I did the jokes. I did the, uh, you know, like if you could see it here, you'd be looking at that and saying, yeah, that, that's awesome. You know? <laughs> and this was the slide where everyone threw dollar bills at me. Yes, I understand. That's the most incredible slide I've ever seen, Christian. And people cried. People, they wept in the, in the audience. They were, yeah. I mean, get your head out of the gutter, man. Your face is way too red to be, to be laughing at a regular joke. All right. So here's question number three. Um, Joe or it, Joel or Joe L. Joel says, uh, anyone know of a URL that can take you to the Teams app in the browser to the org view for a person? Better yet, the org view for the person that is authenticated in the browser or logged in. It says, I want to get to a my person card with the org tree displayed via a URL. Wow, that's that's a question right there. Yeah, I don't see. think there's a specific URL. I mean, you could check and see, but you still have to click to go into that. There's not a shortcut of URL that you could just share out. It, it's almost like you want to have a, uh, you'd have to be logged into Teams, um, but you could share a URL. Oh, there's Hal. Um, share a URL, it would just uh, almost hey, Hal. be a uh, About Me page uh, just open up. Hey, Hal. Should we all sing or would that just be obnoxious? <laughs> well, it would be obnoxious, but that doesn't change the question. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Hal. Oh, well, thank you. Yes. Joining the ranks of the septuagenarians. I see. Yeah. I don't know how to take that exactly. On the one it hand, it's it wow, is. 70. On the other hand, it's wow, 70. I see I see. there was clearly a, a, an email that went out of <laughs> blue shirts today, which no one copied me on. So thanks for that. Uh, at least you're part of the team. That's good. <laughs> works for me so to that question number three um uh, if you want to figure out what url is being actually sent to get what you're looking at i mean this is another case of you if you press f12 in your browser and you go over to the network tab you'll see the request coming across sent from teams uh, assuming you are of course logged into teams and you're looking teams in that browser so mm -hmm. that's one way to get at it but that doesn't address the entire question yeah will that you know, but will that display properly i don't think it will i think it's one of those you know internal mechanics the only way you can get there is by being logged into it and then clicking over on that profile it's yeah i've seen it's almost silver it's silver light-esque in that way oh god silver light. <laughs> oh you said the s word uh, uh -oh. Those of us who invested in Silverlight are still bitter. <laughs> in any case, um, yeah, I've seen both types of URLs in uh, Teams being used. There are the the standalone URLs that, if used without the Teams context around them, will get you somewhere. But you're right; there are a lot of them that are kind of internal uh, requests that then get interpreted through whatever framework is uh, providing the Teams interface on the browser. So might work, might not work, but at least get you a little bit closer. Though I don't think you're going to get the answer you really are looking for. I, I don't think we're at that point where we can do that. Yeah. Yeah, I get the request too. I mean, I, I it would be... I, it would be nice to be able to to provide that as part of a you know, response, almost like an e-signature within Teams and have your profile card and just be able to click on that and it pop that open. Um, you know, so I, I'd like to use it in that I, manner. I would go out to uh, user voice or um, any of the Microsoft feedback sites. If that's something you truly want, you may not be alone and somebody may have logged a user voice request. If not, um, you could start one. 
And if you're not familiar with user voice, that is the tool that Microsoft uses in many cases to select and prioritize features uh, for the next rev of a product. Um, and oftentimes the product group or product ma manager for the specific product will be watching that forum and respond when they are doing something. For instance, uh, if a feature is requested and they decide to work on it, they'll actually provide the feedback that they're working on it, that they've delivered it, et cetera. So good place to go. And by the way, in the, you just noticed it's a question uh, uh, further down, but uh, I just switched the view of the live stream over into together mode. Do you guys feel more together now? Um, <laughs> well, it, it's not what you see. I'm asking, it, you, do you feel more together? Like just, oh, well, did you absolutely. feel it? Like when I clicked over, didn't you get this sense that kind of tingling, that shivering through the body that it, you know, something happened? What just happened? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, with both you and Eric looking over my shoulder behind me, uh, I'm tangling. Yeah, really? Yeah. Can I do that? <laughs> there we go. Dude, it's kind of the rabbit ears behind it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's uh, jump to question number four. And again, feel if you're watching the live stream, have any questions, uh, type it in, and we'll uh, we'll try to address those as well. So, uh, let's see. Question number four from Dan. Uh, when creating a new scheduled meeting and adding the team channel, it is for, uh, I'm seeing select members or owners of the team being added as optional attendees. I'm not listing any individual as required or optional, but just attaching to the team channel. Can you think of how or why this is happening? It doesn't seem to follow any rhyme or reason. One meeting has only owners listed and not all of them. Another meeting has a single member along with the other owners. I'm not seeing the pattern to hopefully lead me to why this is taking place. Um, are you trying to post these meetings in the same channel or multiple channels? I mean, who's the owner of the channel? What's the uh, the people, the groups that are allowed to see that? I suspect it's driven off that. Yeah, that was my first thought too, is are you seeing different behavior from posting multiple meetings to the same channel is what John just said. Um, or yeah, be, because my first thought is the same thing. It's like, well, depending on who created the team and the channel, who the owners and admins are, that could determine what you're seeing there. I suspect Microsoft would call this a value add or a hidden feature, <laughs> um, since the behavior seems to kind of suggest that it is based on, you know, you're seeing members of the team. If I owned a team and I started a channel, I think I'd want to know if something were coming up with it. But it depends on how you use Teams. Well, so going way in the way back time machine, back to 2001, 2002, <laughs> I was with a company called E2Open, and we built a, a platform that was a, a hosted collaboration platform. And our product was called Collaboration Manager. And one of the things that I loved, we did, we had uh, WebEx integrated into our solution. And in our collaboration space, which is like a team space, team site, um, it did exactly this. If you went in, if there were, you know, the four of us that were in that collaboration space and I started a new meeting, it would automatically default add the four of us with a checkbox. And I could then uncheck any, like, we don't want Eric here, uncheck. And then, uh, you know, immediately they had by email invite other people to it. So it was very very easy to add people. And I think that is, it's, I, I believe that's the, uh, that's the design that is supposed to act like that. But if that's not occurring, I mean, cause what he's saying is that he's seeing um, sometimes, you know, most of the owners, but not all of them. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I, again, this is another one where the specifics and the details really do make a difference. Um, but it feels like, you know what you're saying christian and what i've said specifically that uh it's attempting to ascertain who it thinks should be invited to the meeting based on channel dynamics team dynamics things like that so. yeah i'll have to look closely closer at that dan if you uh watch the recording if you have any other detail that you can provide and clarify because i i think if there if you are seeing you know different uh, uh, 
a different mix of people being added for the same channel for, you know, so you add two meetings and you're getting different people that are automatically added, then that would indicate, yeah, there's something buggy going on. Um, Not that Teams has never had a bug before. That's true. That's true. Not before noon, Easter. <laughs> I'm glad you specified Eastern, Eric. Well, I, I didn't want everyone else to have a bad expectation set. So. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. Uh, question five. Ollie asks, uh, not seen much uh, said in communities about the maze ransomware vulnerability in Teams Updater, which Microsoft seems unable to solve as it's by design. Anyone who knows their stuff got views on this? I'm not up to date on it. Don't know what it is. Uh, I'm going to read about Maze Ransomware right now because I'm not familiar with it. Yeah, that's... There's so well, damn many exploits these I days. don't know that you should be uh, searching for that there, Sean. Are you suggesting that my security might be lax and that it would let something through, Eric? Yeah, I am pretty much. <laughs> Uh, at least you're straightforward. Yeah. So McAfee says, Maze Ransomware, <laughs> previously known in the community as Cha-Cha Ransomware, discovered on May 29th, 2019. Main goal, blah, 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 Ransomware. We know what Ransomware does. So lots of information about it. I'll put this in the chat window if you guys decide at some point you want to read about it. <sighs> But for what it's worth, it's a 32-bit binary, which should, but well, it depends. I was going to say on 64-bit systems, it will limit your exposure somewhat if you're running. But anyway, we're not going to be able to make much progress on this right now. Hmm. All right. Yeah, so we don't have it, though. A response. Okay, we'll add that to the list of to-dos as well. Task created and assigned. Sean? Got it. All right. Uh, six. Jeff, uh, here's a question. Uh, I have about 300 users on Teams voice hosted by Microsoft. Oh, it's another voice one. So let's, we'll all um, uh, take a coffee break here. Uh, <laughs> so if, if a user leaves the company... How can I forward the inbound calls from PSTN to someone else? I know it can be done in the client, but when the license is revoked, the forwarding will stop. I'm thinking a call queue would be an option, but it's not simple since the user number needs to be changed to a service number. Anyone have some ideas? Thanks in advance. Uh, is I don't know if it's an option, but could they potentially temporarily reassign the license, make some changes, and then revoke them. I, I don't know of anything else. I'm just not a PSTN guy. Yeah. We're all great telephony folks here. As we as we talk about almost every week, so when, you know, yeah. we are Eric's not staring off yet. to his left in the distance, Hal, taking drinks of coffee. I mean, yeah, we're really... We're really saying a lot right now. I mean, if you prefer, I can have my, I have three screens going here. So if you prefer, I can have <laughs> that better. Uh, check your, check your phone setup. Or there's a, a phone module for um, certified IP phones in the event center. And there should be a configuration profile you can edit for that user. That's that doesn't longer work. assigned a license. I do think it's a problem though. If you revoke the license and it's it's gone, and so it's not going to afford that. So you have to change the state of that user to something that's that's you know an a license back. Paused, right? Yeah. 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 If that's even. But yeah, Jeff, we're uh, about useless on this one. Sorry. I, I, I like to include a telephony question. Uh, oh, sorry. One of these days, we're going we're gonna to be like, hey, oh, oh I, I know it. I'm going to answer that one. And, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I hope we have uh, many, many future episodes because I think it's going to take a while. 
Yeah. Just like it takes to eat a chocodile. What? It takes a while to eat a chocodile? Oh, come yeah. on. I know you're, what are. you're of age, you should know that. I'm sorry, you know we only speak English here. Some of us. <clears throat> a chocodile is for those who speak chocolate. Uh, it takes a while to eat a chocodile. I don't know that reference. What is that? <sighs> chocodile is a product that was in the line of... Uh, it was like a chocolate Twinkie, basically. And I just posted the uh, the advertisement from way back. Yeah, it's a chocolate covered Twinkie. I don't remember that chocolate at all. Twinkie. Yeah. Huh. A wow. covered Twinkie. Takes a while to eat a chocolate dial. Right when, there. Did they, when did they pull yep. those from production? <laughs> I <laughs> Probably not. Not that it really. matters. I, it, it's not that it matters. I mean, it's a Twinkie, so they could have uh, could have been the late seventies when they stopped making them, and they're still, you know, packaged fresh, still out there. It's a Twinkie after all. So yeah, I mean, they're still pulling them out of the old nuclear bunkers, <laughs> fall out shelters, and reselling them for a tidy, tidy bit of profit. I'm sure on. <laughs> all right, let's jump. Uh, question number seven. Uh, Jorgen says, uh, we're going to have a team's meeting with some form of a stage. Oh, this is an interesting question. Um, this is a great one for a lot of the people that are doing, uh, in-person or hybrid events and mm-hmm. leveraging the technology. So this may be, again, might be more of a discussion, may not have a, a firm answer on this, but, uh, we're going to have a team's meeting with some form of stage. I need to have an external camera connected to the PC instead of using the built-in. <laughs> Thinking like a camcorder. Anyone tried this? It's a team meeting and not live. Well, that, you don't need a full camcorder. You can do that, and there's some that will connect. But like I have you know, my device, I've got a Logitech. There's plenty that you can have a USB camera hooked up to. And I've done this on, on location with my Surface Pro and had an external camera and just use that and move it around. And I've actually walked around uh, with the Wi-Fi and using the camera and walking through the the crowd, so there's also that those devices with some people have these days. But it's about telephony, so we can't answer that part. What is that man doing? Which man? You. Nothing. Just taking a picture. I'm gonna post this, or at least show it. Yeah, we just lost it entirely. When you hold it up in in the uh, in the together mode, you try to hold something up that's oh. not your face, and you disappear. Hmm. You're still not in together. Okay. Well, anyway, I was showing yeah. a picture of my Logitech. You were showing nothing. Congratulations. I was attempting. There you go. <laughs> oh yes, I see my missing head and everything. Yep. That's right. It's a nice. It's a feature. I see my missing head. I don't see my head. How about that? Any camera, any HD cam that you've got will suffice as a second camera or a first camera. It will, teams will pick it up by itself. It will actually use it as your first camera. Uh, but it, any- it should be pretty easy to, to configure and coordinate as far as your team reading those. We're all, I think we're all using external cameras. Yeah, any camera can be the right camera. Yeah, the the difficulty will then be uh, is not the uh, visual, but will be the audio. Uh, like anything, I mean, you have three to, for a good uh, web video experience. There's the camera, there's the audio, and there's the lighting. And so, uh, with that kind of distance, you you'll want a, a higher quality, um, uh, uh, you know, camera. But you know, something that is they've got for about. 250 to 300 bucks they've got the 4k cameras out now um that will do a better job of picking up something like a live stage you just want to make sure that it's well lit because they're naturally a little bit darker um it will come up grainier but then the big issue will be the sound Um, yeah go with a directional mic not an omnidirectional right you don't want to be picking up everyone in the audience you want to be picking up the speaker 
I, I wonder how with some of the AI, how teams would react to that anyway, picking up the loud mm-hmm. audio. Um, so maybe even like a uh, if you've got the the configuration for it, like a, a wireless mic. Uh, yeah. I don't know what level of uh, pre-processing it does before it sends it out. I don't know if they've got that built into the team's client or not at this point. I'm sure somebody who's, I mean, do you, any of you guys know? The other thing I was going to suggest too is, um, Christian, I know you through your various experiences of wiring in multiple f- feeds and everything and um, working with OBS, um, there might be some options to uh, add additional feeds or swapping back and forth. It might give you a, a more, it might give you more control over the experience than just teams alone. So. Yeah, no, I- exactly. I-, I think if you are just going straight teams, then you're going to have part of that, you know, the AI issues where it's doing a, you know, increasingly doing a great job of filtering out all of that background noise. But when you want the background noise, when you yeah. You're trying to capture a stage, um, then you have to be careful about what it's picking up. So having good mics in, in in place. If you've got like a panel of people and they're all mic'd and there's an audience there, um, you're you're it's gonna you know you'll still be able to hear the those those speakers that they're you know the heard above the crowd. But um, I'm just not sure how teams out of the box will pick up will handle that with that distance in place. So that's something that you want to test out. Um, but OBS is an option. Out. If you're not f- familiar with OBS, it's the uh, what is it? Open broadcasting open broadcast, open broadcast s- software. Yeah, and uh, there's a you know different flavors of it that are out there. I I prefer the Streamlabs OBS. It's still free. It's built on that open source software, but they have uh, uh, improved upon it, so the out of the box experience is better. <laughs> um, but that's something that that's the magic like, bullet that got Christian to get this whole show rolling, going, yeah. roll. Yeah. Rolling. <laughs> but it, so it's something that you can use. Like I have my Surface Pro, so I have uh, I have OBS loaded on that. I can have certain views set up. If you're going to switch back and forth between maybe a narrator, so somebody that's sitting back and asking questions and conversing with a panel that's sitting on a stage, for example, you might want to go back and forth with two different uh, uh, feeds or two different uh, streams and, uh, and, and audio and video setups for those two things. Um, I mean, there's just a lot. It gives you many more options of doing a live, uh, live event. So uh, just speaking of this, it's kind of top of mind why I included it in the questions here is, So we have the North American Collaboration Summit coming up at the end of September in um, uh, Branson, Missouri. Uh, And uh, so I'm helping Mark and team put on the virtual part of the hybrid event. So there'll be 150, 200 people that'll be there in Branson. Uh, I'm planning to go out there now I was going to try and drive it, but you know, the 19 to 20 hour drive one way, I think I'm going to fly. Yeah. But, um, anyway, um, we're going to be running, uh, you know, all day long, you know, five or six tracks and we're going to do it in a hybrid model. Um, so we're going to have cameras in the rooms. We're going to have rooms within teams, and I'll be kind of monitoring and helping run those. And we're going to have people that are moderating in each of those spaces. Um, and, uh, and so we are also going to test out thoroughly this specific issue and, and find out firsthand what works. Because um, I just personally, I don't know. I was just thinking somebody who may have experience with teams, with a stage, uh, and who could probably answer this question is uh, Daryl Webster. Um, so I know he's done a lot of uh, playing with uh, the the audio and video settings and different formats with Teams, and he may be able to have some uh, specific advice on this. So we'll have to rope him in to see if there's anything else. Any Daryl as a service. Daryl as a service. Yeah, Daryl A A S on Twitter. 
All right. Let's see. Um, How do we set up a meeting with together mode? Is there a minimum number of people? Says asks Tim Parkinson. Yep. That's a well, uh, so there's four of us. We're doing and we're it in together mode. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Minimum's what? Two or three? I I forget. I thought Ooh, it was oh, five initially, but they clearly yeah. they dropped it down because there's four. So definitely uh, three and a half. Yeah. I've done, done three. Yeah. So I think it's it must be three three or more. Um, and Hal just disappeared. We've upset Hal. We've yeah. upset. Hal. Uh, oh, he came back smaller. There he is. Oh no, he's he's, walk, he's walking around. So yeah, he is. Yeah. He's fishing for something. But it's um yeah. So it, if if there's two uh, uh two people on it, then uh, where you see it, you can see this in the live stream. You won't see in the recording. But up in the 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 top bar with all of your options, you the the ellipses, the more actions, and I, I'm able to toggle the together mode, so I can switch back over to the gallery mode so you're seeing if you're watching the live stream or click on the together mode um so this is when you're doing a meeting some people have said it's like well hey i'm in together mode this is great like i'm live streaming it but what you're seeing is my screen um and, and so the together mode view is your view of that meeting some people don't want the together mode view and so uh, are, are any of you guys doing together mode or are you doing the regular Nah. Okay. Regular. So, um, you know, I, I like this for the live stream for the what you're seeing in the feed, but everybody else sees the gallery mode. So this way. Yeah, I'm in the together mode. It looks like looking back at the at a theater audience. So. Yep. And I, I'm next sitting next to Sean. You're behind me. Uh, Sit in the back, and, cause and, trouble. And there, yeah, 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 right yeah. in between us. And Eric is off to the off to the left slightly. Yeah, I don't know about you. I don't know about you, Hal, but it disturbs me that they're behind us rather than in front of yeah, us. Yeah, really, troublemakers. Yeah, it, I think it goes by when you uh, when you enter. No, it actually doesn't. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but it does. It does scale based on the number of people. So you're not going to have. If there are four people in the room in together mode, then you're going to have sort of a close up of what, six or eight chairs and the people in it. Uh, if you have 10, 20, it's going to scale back and you'll see a wider view with all the people. You really get the benefit when there's, you know, 30, 40 people in the room. I think it's a really nice yeah. feature. If you want to see it in action, I mean, you can see it uh, if you watch any of the NBA games that are going on right now where they have the giant screens around, they're playing it in you know, empty uh, uh, arena, and yet they've got the giant screens, and I would love to go in and participate in one of those, And but... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Good times. Yeah, All right. I think that was the yeah. best clever idea. So I know it's better than the, than the card. Yeah. Card yeah. Definitely. We're all wondering how they were going to do that with these uh, no fans in the stadiums and and I thought that uh, was a really uh, clever way of doing that. And of making that experience exclusive. So I don't know how you uh, dial in and can participate there, but uh, mm -hmm. cool experience. All right. Uh, Sherilyn asked question number nine, why does my Outlook keep doing this? And has the Microsoft Outlook contacting the server for information? And then it just hangs there. Why does it keep doing that? Well, whoever is supplying is it the or other. Well, for a while a it is. Well, yeah, you want to get your email, right? I mean, it's got to talk to the server to get that sometime. <laughs> and a persistent connection. I mean, oftentimes this will happen in the background. But, you know, if your tenant's running slow or there's web service issues or degradation, <laughs> oftentimes it can spin for quite some time. And... In I know how it's the big outlook guy. Sender. Yeah. What's that, Hal? In my case, it's one particular sender. I've got uh, the uh, Fox Restaurant Group. That's the people that bring you, it seems to me, uh, uh, Zinberger and North Italia. And, oh, I don't know, they've got like 
culinary dropout is another one in there. Three or four or five more of them. But uh, because I'm uh, because we eat there and I'm part of their rewards arrangement, I get emails from me all the time and very and, and invariably every one of them I get regardless of which particular restaurant in the chain. I always get the little square box saying Windows is contacting the server for information with the little green slider going back and forth. And this is simply because wherever whichever server those graphics, because it's always the graphics that come in in the message, the picture of the spaghetti or the picture of the wine glass full or the wine bottle or whatever. Those are what's hanging it up. Uh, and it's whatever server that Outlook has to go to to get those graphics that that particular server is slow. And anytime you want, Outlook is requesting data from an external source and that slow is slower in responding, you're going to see that scene that, 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 that morning. It is totally harmless. It's nothing to do with Outlook and everything to do with the internet between Outlook and where the source of the graphic or whatever embedded object the email message is requesting. And Sherilyn, it, it's just, this is an improvement over no visual no, feedback whatsoever. No right. Yeah. In which case you probably shut Outlook down, reboot your system and get back into it and might have the same thing happen again. Yeah. It may still be missing, so we're just talking a little things say I'm getting stuff. Kind of a similar similar issues before we started recording here. Um, Sean and I were talking about um, the uh, uh, seeing a severe kind of anybody else has experienced this with Facebook with a severe lazy load on the pages uh, and, and that. So I, you know, I, and it was serious enough where just it, I was like, well, is my system hung up? I'm not able to scroll down past you know, four or five messages, either on my own feed or any of the community pages. I, I refreshed the browser. I refreshed my machine to see if there was something on my side. As we discussed, like it, it was, uh, and then suddenly, you know, two minutes before we started here, suddenly it started working uh, again. Uh, that uh, sometimes it's just, uh, you know, the serious load. People, you know, it's Facebook, people sharing pictures and videos and other crap. And it's just a lot to load. Yeah, for what it's worth, um, anybody who gets that, that ha happens to uh, get a real slowdown, if you're going to do a refresh, do a control F5 rather than hit F5 to refresh, because what that'll do is bust your cache and force a reload of all script uh, resources and CSS sheets and everything. And oftentimes that'll get you around it quicker and more readily than a, just an F5 refresh, which Re, just reissues the request for the page. Excellent tip. All right. Excellent. All right. Uh, one, maybe two questions here, but uh, question number 10. Um, Carolyn asks, um, so I, she says, uh, I created a tag for a subgroup of a team. Uh, when I went to use it, an error message popped up on the screen. In the post, it shows as red and bold. I checked with one of the people on the tag and they didn't get the pop-up mention. Is this a sync issue since the team is cloud-based? If anybody's experienced that. So creating the tag and assigning people to that tag. Um, but when trying to use the tag, that's when she's seeing the error message. And where's the tag getting created? in tags inside of teams mm. so you create it you have the option to add people to it mm -hmm. so it's essentially like a mini dl uh to notify those people of that but when she tries to use it she's getting the red and bold pop-up and people are not seeing it well when you create it through the client it's doing that on instantaneously out on the server as well, right? There's no caching on the client side that's happening with those tags. Yeah, so my first question, I don't know specifically, I'm not, I'm not dug into this, but my first thought is that, well, something failed in the tag creation process that might cause that. There's no screen capture of the error So Carolyn, if you still see that um, and can capture a screen of it, 
you know, do a print screen and save the resulting image. You can either paste it into yeah. uh, Word or some other application. There's also a bunch of uh, tagging options in the Teams admin. You may want to check so if you're if you're a team if you're a Teams owner or a team owner. Um, you may not be able to manage the tag. That's a good suggestion. Yeah, check. I know that there's there's quite a few things out there about um, uh, just management of of tags. It looks like uh, I mean there's different issues of of people that are having problems that should be able to create tags and they can't, um, that tags are created, but you can't add anybody to those. Um, I'm looking for this specific one. Um, it's failing to update the tagged list. That's what this sounds like. So I'm going out to roadmap right now to see if I can get anything here. Uh, device tagging functionality, tagging by shifts. No, there's, these are all things that rolled out. No, one of them rolled out in the past, but I'm not seeing anything specifically. Yeah, and, and, and these two, these look like the same issue. The only advice coming in from Microsoft people is to uh, log the issue. Yeah, so it sounds like it might be a, a bug that uh, they're trying to nail down. Yeah. Start with the, the permissions tags. That's that's the easiest place to start and figure out if you have permissions to do it, you'll hold it there and then go from there. Yeah. <clears throat> Nine out of 10 times, the problem in SharePoint is permissions, and the other one out of 10 times, it's permissions. You just don't realize it. <laughs> well, this is, it's also just kind of good advice. I know it's a its a pain in the butt to have to go and log a ticket or or even for something that's missing, that's not a bug, but a, a missing feature that's crucial um, and to go in and, and search user voice and then create a, a user voice instance. But we, we need to get better uh, as a community. We need to make sure we provide this feedback back to Microsoft. They don't know to fix it if they're not hearing about it. If they don't see, if they see yeah. it from one person, but it's something that all of us are seeing and they just see it from the one person, they're not going to prioritize it as high. So they need to have that that feedback. As we talked about last week, um, as Neil kind of uh, you know shared from the product team standpoint, if there's five, 10 or more um, people that have voted up on a user voice, then Microsoft will respond formally. Um, so the best thing to do is you experience something like this, if you don't find it in user voice um, or to uh, to to create a, a, you know an item there is to then send it out to the community, share it with people in your organization so that they all go in and vote it up, and then Microsoft will formally respond to those things. But at the very least, open a support ticket for something like this. Yeah, another resource uh, for whatever it's worth, and I posted the link is uh, SharePoint Stack Exchange. If you're not familiar with the stack forums that have existed forever for primarily for developers they're kind of places people can uh, ask questions get answers and it's gamified so that you know good answers uh, get points and those people get voted up and you get to understand the pecking order but this is the type of question somebody might also drop in some place like sharepoint stack exchange um, and you might get eyeballs on it there's always the twitter hashtags too um, I don't know. Is there a Teams counterpoint uh, counterpart to um, the SharePoint uh, tag SP help? Do you know? That's a great question. I don't know. Like, like teams help. If not, you can always do a hashtag Teams help and you might get somewhere. But SP help is uh, one that a lot of people passively uh, look at every now and then, and that will pop up. And you might get eyeballs on the question uh, that you might not get otherwise. Yeah. Well, now that the, all that stuff is under uh, a teeper, then uh, uh, you can kind of hack that system by tagging SP help. Where you know someone will look at it and uh, pass it over to their team's counterpart. Or, or just reach out to Jeff directly. He likes that. Or that. <laughs> He's such a nice guy that he would probably uh, respond. 
He is. And he might. Provide you with Bill Bear's uh, email and, uh, and personal cell phone. <laughs> Don't poke the troll. Uh, I, I <laughs> Bill is, still bears the scars of when I wouldn't leave him alone uh, for. No, we'd always talk. We'd talk about that where he'd be like, "No, no problem. Give out my emails." Like, you know, Bill, and he'll respond if he knows the answer, if it's the right thing, or he'll push it out to somebody but he'll he'll uh he, he's great about the community stuff but um yeah things that aren't related to what he does now since he's kind of changed roles yeah um i just I, now i now i share it just to be funny you know just yeah, to okay. spam him yeah <laughs> i don't i never do that bill so he could hate on you the next time he sees you yeah, i never do that so all right. Well, well, gentlemen, we are uh, we are at the top of the hour. We're out of time, but uh, thanks a lot, everybody, for participating. And we'll be back at six p.m. Pacific. Well, except for Eric, he needs his twelve hours of beauty sleep, so um, he'll be back next week. Still not working. One right. of these one of these weeks, I'm going to surprise everybody and show up at eight, and no one will be here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but if there's anything else, uh, you know, Eric, any input on the questions that we already covered? Uh, you know, send our way, but we'll make sure to uh, include it in. Again, if you have any questions you'd like us to try and address, we'll be back again tonight, but you will do it via email. You can send those to office hours at collabtalk.com and uh, or continue posting to the Office 365 community out on Facebook and the Microsoft Teams community out on Facebook. And we'll, uh, we, we kind of uh, screen scrape questions from those two communities as well. So thank you to everybody. I'm going to go jump to my next call. And we'll see yes, you sir. this evening. Take care, everyone. Thanks. Yep. Right. Bye. Care. And on and on about how to. How to. Well, I, your cruelty, Christian, knows no bounds. <laughs> I just you know, I it, it's it's a little bit. It's like eighty five, and I whine and complain. I hate the heat, and so my wife is just like, if it's a little bit warm, it's like guaranteed. Christian will complain about it. You're like, oh. get your skirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hang on, I'm going to push that stuff live. Just a second. And I would like, for the record, it to be known that I am here on time tonight. Yes, congrats. A brownie can't point. Can't claim that too. all. Yeah, I can't claim it'll happen again, but you know. <laughs> all right, let me let me start this watch party. And that goes out to the public. Get that up in the background. Christian mm -mm. started a watch party. Yeah, that's on my page. You're gonna is it the only place I'm gonna share that in a group. There it is. I'm going to get the little icon on Facebook with a popcorn bucket. Yeah. You know, I have one of those popcorn. My my wife bought me this. I'm a huge popcorn guy. And, and so she bought me this porcelain big popcorn bowl, movie bowl thing. And mm -hmm. uh, surprised, man, I've had it for, for close to a decade and it's not broken yet. Of course, now that I've just said that out loud this weekend. Yeah, tempting fate. Yeah, like, I know you're a popcorn guy. Uh, when we went to see Ghost in the Shell out on the West Coast. There you go. You, yep. uh you went back for another bucket. <laughs> I've watched and that another small. couple times. No, I, I can. I, no, I can eat my body weight and, and popcorn, no problem. I believe that. Yeah. yeah. Um, hey, we're so we're live for this real quick. Those that oh, are yeah. watching, we're, we're we're live streaming. We're up and live. So uh, thanks for coming in and watching. This is uh, the Microsoft Community Office Hours. This is part two of episode twenty-two, our twenty-second week in a row. Of sitting on here babbling. Hot charts part two. Yeah. <laughs> Christian Buckley, <laughs> Sean McDonough, Hal Hostetler, cast of thousands behind the scenes. Uh, yeah. He didn't say thousands of what, folks. Uh, but No, no, just cast of thousands. Well, clearly they're all like um, miniature things on the animals. top shelf of that. Yeah, yeah I mean, I've not, wor I've not know, organized that yet. Yeah. What else do you do with all those things? Honestly, I, I, a couple of the ones that are the pure, like the aluminum ones that have the carabiners, they're out in the mm -hmm. camping mm -hmm. equipment.
And the rest of them are like, what, what? I don't use them because I've got my no sweat giant mug thing. And so I came up with that idea. I've not organized them yet. You'll get there. My daughter the other day was like, I'm going to go get a new water bottle. I said, you're going to do no such thing. We've got an entire cabinet in the, uh, the kitchen of nothing but water bottles from every SharePoint event and technology conference in existence. Yeah. I was thinking about that, too. As I was going through My wife and I have been going through and sorting through the garage, and we did the ultimatum with the kids, like, come and get your crap out of our garage or we're <laughs> giving it to the thrift store. Um, and I found two um, uh, uh, waterproof bags that hmm. are vendor bags. There's a Live Tiles and – is it a Rencore or so? – anyway, I mean, two of them. And, uh, and I'm like, camping gear. And then those aluminum – flasks or awesome camping gears um i think i have a k2 and a nintex competing uh water flasks uh yeah, out in back now. fight behind the scenes so i love that kind of stuff and i think i have like a metalogix pocket knife or something and mm. uh, to just anyway yeah i i gravitate towards the free camping gear yeah and the swag Why not? yeah it's gonna be useful swag so we have, I think, I, uh, looking at the Office 365 community page on Facebook, the Microsoft Teams group on Facebook, I, I think there's only one, maybe two new questions that have been asked over the course of the day. If somebody watching uh, one of the live streams has a question, would like us to attempt to tackle those questions, just as long as you don't ask about telephony. <laughs> yeah. Uh, PSTN are, are three letters we're not real good with. Uh, yeah. I'm aware of, I admire those problems. I don't have an answer. <laughs> I'm I a big fan, big user of PSTN. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, cousin you, ESPN. Hey, Sean, were you able to find out anything about that? Um, I'm looking for the <laughs> question here. Uh, no, I've still got the link open on my desktop. Uh, the, uh, oh. the maze, ransomware maze. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't finish that book. A lot of uh, op code, uh, assembly code. McAfee really does a big job of sharing this stuff out. Yeah, I know nothing about that issue. Didn't experience it. I saw it, and I just, I think in my head, I go towards sci-fi and fantasy books. I start thinking Maze Runner, crappy movie, <laughs> excellent books. Um, Have you seen Cube? No. It's an old... B flick of sorts. Look it up. It's a bunch of people, a handful of people get caught in this. Uh... A cube? Uh, well, it starts out, they're, they're, they get there, they don't know how they're there, they wake up, they don't know what's going on. And each, there are, on each of the six walls, there's a, a door that can open up into another area like their own. It's a series of interconnected cubes. Most of them have traps. They have different, uh, there's a system to it. And the one guy who um, is on the autism spectrum ends up, you know, giving them answers relating to primes and primes of primes and, you know, all these different numbers. And it's an interesting movie. It's, it's a novel concept. I wouldn't call it a good movie, but it's worth watching at least once. I've got it so on my Plex too, so. Escape Room meets Portal, the game. Okay. Yeah, uh, sort of, yeah. In a manner of speaking, yeah. Just I still have this uh, little list here. I'm going to go look them up. But those movies that I talked about last week, Predestination and Time yeah. Lapse. Um, yeah, I watch. I, I I enjoy some of those time travel type, you know, interesting stories. I just watched the one where um, I, I don't know the actor's name. He was in the new Star Wars. He was like the uh, the the commander who uh, of the giant the death planet the star killer base the red haired actor that guy the skinny oh, guy yeah I know who you're talking about yeah. anyway so he's in one where he learns from his father that he can time travel and only the males in the family can time travel by going into a dark place like a closet closing your eyes and with your fists at your side clenching the fists and thinking of where you want to go what time backwards in time and you're instantly there. Huh. So they get a lot of uh, men 
teleporting out of the toilet in the bathroom, huh? Yeah, well, they, they go and they figure they, they screw something up and they basically can go back and repeat and fix it. But yes. Yes. Uh, we know the rules, the, the super We've had this conversation, I know we have, about what superpower would you want to have? And there's there's a downside to every superpower. Mm-hmm. And like, like uh, you know, teleportation. It sounds fantastic, except that everywhere you appear... You're buck naked. So only you travel, not, not anything on you. Oh, down- so it's a Terminator style teleportation. Yeah. You can fly, but only at the same speed that you can move yourself on land. So, so like a power. Fly block. five miles yeah, an hour, would... five to six miles an hour. Uh, yeah. Semi, not quite superpowers. Yeah. Noteworthy powers, I guess we'll call them. <laughs> Noteworthy, uniquely powers. noteworthy. <laughs> yeah, I still I have the. I, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. I was just gonna bring us back around. I, I was looking over some of the other questions. We left off with uh, number ten. We stopped at we, ten. Yep. Yeah, we stopped at ten, which was the that um, would put us at tags. eleven. All right. In base ten, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, from Mirko. Um, having some trouble with conditional access. Uh, reason every device is double in the list as AD uh, reg ID registered, registered and yeah. AD hybrid I thought it was joined. registered. I just want to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> AD hybrid joined. What is the best? What is the best way to prevent this? Oh, I've not done any real conditional access troubleshooting. Um, that one we'll have to take away. Unless, Hal, you're leading a double life. No. <laughs> Some no. of us are barely guilty of leading a single life. I know. There's a couple of these questions that I, I put together, and I, I think, you know, hey, I think we're going to have Neil here. I'm sure Neil would know. Mike like, would probably have an idea on this too. Yeah, that's true. All yeah, right, so just, Mike didn't show up. He must still be uh, enjoying the uh, go. the you know, the post vacation. Remember, he's out for the oh. week. Yeah, that's right. I I know before that he had a bit of the you know vertigo going on. Yeah, but but I think uh, with the vacation, he's probably paying the price for taking the time off. Is <laughs> I catch up still. Yeah, taking the time off is less about taking time off and more about delaying everything going on. You buy yourself a a gap that you pay for doubly, which stinks. Well, question twelve. Hey, Sean, this is uh, I, I, you hang out with the PMP folks, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Has anybody used Get PMP Group for a site in SharePoint to get all the groups in SharePoint site? It returns a lot of garbage. Um, I've used a number of the get PMP commandlets. Um, they, they function a little weird, uh, depending on, you know, one thing that, uh, this really depends. I know these, uh, depend significantly on whether it's SharePoint online or SharePoint on-prem, um, because the commandlets in SharePoint PMP online don't necessarily work the way they did on-prem. I know this from, uh, I was trying to write a script to get alerts for all the users in a site. And I wrote a script that would um, build a list of, uh, compile a list of all the libraries and lists in the site. And then it would get a list of the users and then find the overlap and give you a, uh, a CSV export, which could then be used to, um, do things like recreate the lists. And I tested it in SharePoint 2019 on-prem, SharePoint online. And the farm I had to run it against was 2013 and it did not work. And after looking at the fine print for the commandlets, um, it was dependent on the on-prem version. The necessary endpoints aren't exposed that early in SharePoint. Um, It was only with 2016 that they came around. So, um, but get PMP group, so we're saying for a site, I've not 
had to use that specifically, but it functions like all the other ones. Well, his last part of his question too, is being able to filter that. Yeah, uh, so it kind of depends on how he's running it. Um, there's just get PMP group returns all SharePoint groups in a site. Let me actually go into, I've got a SharePoint VM open. Um, let me go out to, so talk amongst yourselves as I'm poking away at this. How's it going, Hal? <laughs> That's fine. You know, talk amongst yourselves. Walking down uh, the street park. And one of them was assaulted. Peanut. Uh, well, we'll just add this to my list of things to do. Yeah, this is add a, another, to... another Sean task on, on that day. Yeah, I was looking to see if I could find something that I don't see anything else. Yeah, it's really just a matter of running it and see what gets dumped out. Um, right. They generally dump uh, things in a fairly common format, but since there's a whole bunch of different people that work on that, there are small differences in how they operate depending on uh, who wrote the, the supporting code for it. So, but we'll figure this out. PMP group. Well, the next question is not really a question. It's more of a, a statement, somebody pointing something out. But Peter says, uh, it, it appears and I've tested that once you add a guest to a team, they have the ability to start direct chats with any internal user or any guest in any other team on that tenant, so long as they know their email address. How is this not a security hole? Um, well, somebody's added to a team. I assume it's an, uh, an external user, so by adding them to a team, they become a guest in the tenant. Then they have the if they know the email address, then right. they can have a chat with the person. So it would be up to who was, whoever's administering that tenant to um, enforce some restrictions on guest users. Yeah. So I think that's a you know it's I don't know that that's necessarily a security gap per se. Uh, I know it feels like one, but whenever you add somebody to use a service that's not a member of that. Uh, tenant, they're assuming you're coming from a a guest account. They're going to get added as an external guest in Active Directory for that uh, domain. So that's going to confer certain benefits. And it's not, you know, when they get added to Active Directory, there's no restriction at that time saying this is only a Teams user. They should not be able to email somebody. You have to enforce a policy to to make that happen. And you've got the tools in Active Directory to do that. So it comes down to uh, letting an admin know and maybe being a friendly uh, guest and just letting them know what might be going on. Yeah. I mean, so right now, I mean, I, I don't believe there's a way that you can block chat. So if they're, I mean, if they're going through the naming convention, if your con naming convention is uh, your for your alias's first, you know, initial last name, type thing and they then you know reach out to bill gates you know through that you know uh, and there's no way that you can go in there and block that bill can always not accept the chat not acknowledge it but um yeah there's i don't believe you can block um you know, by, isn't it isn't it you know, all or nothing, turning on the chat capability, can you block an individual from chatting? Or stop, um, I should say? I don't know. I've not tried to futz around with any of the controls on that at any time recently. Let's see here. In my experience as being a guest in the Microsoft tenant, uh, if, I'm, if I'm in my own tenant and joining a meeting over there, I don't have chat. That has changed recently, though, I must admit. <clears throat> it used to be if you're, you're in your own tenant and you went to the Microsoft guest tenant for 
a meeting of some sort, you would not only not have chat, you wouldn't have emojis. And uh, that has changed as of the last new client that I, I got. Yeah, I know they keep going back and forth on this because the, the limitation on chat was inadvertently affecting a whole lot of people who wanted to participate and should have been able to participate in different meetings. But since they didn't sign in with the, you know, the right uh, account, they were they either didn't have access or could view but not make any contribution. So maybe it swung the other way I, with what you're saying, Hal. I tend to agree with that. <sighs> Let's see. Yeah, I, I, I don't see anything new, but I'm, I'm continuing to look. But the last update that I see from you know, the, uh, July last year, so a year ago, is that, yeah, it's still the all or nothing for the chat capabilities. So um, looking somewhere else, but. Yeah, I'm popping uh, open Azure Active Directory, uh, seeing if I can pluck anything out. Yeah. Users, let's see. I've got some external users in my. Yeah, it looks like there's a couple user voice uh, items that are at least one here is uh, dealing with this. Uh, I'm gonna look at that. I want to see specifically what it says. This is another great example. We mentioned this this morning, but having a request, I think this is a it's a good feature to be able to go in and block an individual or uh, you know block um, you know by domain or. Uh, you know, it'd be great to block by an individual if you have somebody who's ab abusing the chat. If you want to enable chat for only specific, say, hey, uh, you know, guests by default cannot chat except for these people, um, things like that. Uh, I think that is worthy of a user voice entry. Um, yeah, it says allow user to block specific contacts while being able to stay online for others. That's the item that's in user voice. A lot of commentary around it. I don't think that's poorly worded, but again, I get the idea. Yeah, I'll, let me uh, let me post the link to that. If anybody's interested in going in and taking a look at that, commenting, there's over 250 comments there. Uh, I didn't drill down to see if Microsoft responded to anything, but doesn't look like it. Well, in Azure Active Directory, there are external collaboration settings um, within user management, and they're not as granular as what we're talking about here. They're more broad stroke because they've got to go across workloads, so it's not specific to chat. So again, anybody watching the live stream, if you have any questions, like to tackle it, feel free to write them in. Otherwise, uh, we'll uh, see if there's something there. No, that's just us chatting. That's just us chatting. <laughs> oh, I think I did a double entry there. Um, all right. So here's number 14. Andy says, uh, help. That's always a great way to start off a uh, question. Um, Microsoft has flagged my forms as phishing attempts. Uh, the systems tell me that my form cannot be distributed. I use these to collect client information that flows into a spreadsheet. It tells me to see my admin. I am my admin. <laughs> I love those. <laughs> see yourself. This is one of those moments where you need to go into, into the, like the bathroom or wherever there's a large mirror and look directly <laughs> at yourself. And empower yourself Not to make a help. change in your life because, you know, darn it, you're special and no, okay. <laughs> uh, gotcha. Yeah, so I am, I am my admin. How do I inform Microsoft that this is legit? Um, ticket, open a ticket, support. Yeah. If that's... you've been flagged, if your domain, if you've been seen as uh, spamming, uh, list, then that's the conversation you need to have because they'll be able to unlock your account. Um, they'll either, if, if they don't approve of the steps of the method that you're using, uh, just something to remember is that the, the tools, the out of the box, it's not meant for mass emails. 
and Microsoft will flag it again. So, um, Andy, I would be prepared for a tough conversation because the behavior, you know, I, I like Christian said, I assume you're trying to send these to a lot of people. And you'll probably have a conversation with Microsoft that, you know, it's borderline um, spamming behavior, especially if it's being sent to a bunch of unsolicited people. Um, so you're probably, you, I suspect, might have to find a different system to do this. But yeah, put it in as a, a, a request, a support request, and see where that goes. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, that's the kind of thing. That's why a lot of people that use, um, you know, a, a third party, third party uh, mail automation tool, and there's they a lot don't of want their domains blacklisted. Right, and there there are some good ones that are out there. Um, uh, Mailchimp, which a lot of people use, um, I use something that I think is priced about the same, has more functionality, but is uh, Active Campaign. Um, so, yeah. The other thing you won't be seeing here, Andy, and this is actually a good canary in the coal mine. Um, Microsoft it's a good song, be- by the way, the police. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so... <laughs> uh, damn you, Christian. Uh, <laughs> get my mind off track. Um, in any case, Microsoft is flagging you now, and so they see it, and you've got to resolve it with them. Even if you could do this, there are a whole bunch of downstream email services and providers that would see incoming email and the numbers that you're sending from the domain that you're sending from and you would end up blacklisted with them and maybe not even know it and so people would just stop getting email from you and so besides the forms anything else you're trying to send uh potential clients and whatnot suddenly they they may not get it so it's definitely worth like christian said third party route let somebody else get their hands and their domains dirty that's what they do all day and that's what you pay them to do for you yeah yeah i mean if there were uh i mean there's certainly microsoft has the ability to go in and also you know flag and and email a profile um say hey here's kind of a special case they do this on a regular basis it's it's approved and not throttle you but it's not likely in the case of email they watch that pretty closely okay i found it you found it. We can't really hear it. I'm sure you're jamming to it. Gracious. All right, that's from the classic police albums in Yada Mandata. So, all right. <laughs> I want to have that that setup like uh, like the the radio guys that have those repeated clips go on the sound effects. Right. Just that's what I want the stream deck to be for me, and it uh, it hasn't worked out. That delay, that thirty second delay <laughs> with my sound effects. Oh, yeah, the open up here is the the. Uh, like, it just hit the button. We'll see. Did you hear that at all? I, I don't have I, the I system a, sound set up still. So, yeah. Yeah. I heard a little something. Yeah. It's it's not been a high enough priority for me to remember to go and do that. I'll put that as a task to myself. Oh, you're getting a task? Yeah. Can I give you some paper, maybe a pen? I think I heard that come across on the broadcast. What, the music? Oh, yeah, the- I heard your earlier ones come across on the... Because oh. I've got the delay on the Facebook ah, watch. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next question here. Um, Robin Ann Pollard. Shared her first yeah. post. Oh. Welcome, Robin. Robin Ann. Uh, needing help with Office 5 E3 Teams recordings. Based in Cape Town, South Africa, and according to Microsoft support, Stream is not supported in South Africa, which I find hard to believe, 
as at least three other organizations I deal with can, and as they can record their meetings. Yeah, and two new data centers down there. Come on, what's going on down there? Uh, where, what is the workaround, and how do we fix this? Let's um, get Allison Tracy on the line. Yeah, honestly, I, I I didn't realize that stream was unavailable. Is that it's limited geographic deployment? I didn't know that. Uh, We're going to our uh, South African think tank, Hal. Oh, okay. So I'm looking at the availability. No, that's telephony stuff. I don't care about that. <laughs> Clearly. We'll keep drilling that one in. Telephony. So missing facility. Yeah, let's see. Month. No about facility and calendar for settings or help. Huh. Yeah, I'll have to dig and find the regional info. Um, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to look. Yeah, actually, let me let me just shoot a quick email over to see if one of them is is online here. Yeah. Um, we're an unreliable help service and even less reliable out of region. At least today. Yeah, come on. How are you keeping score? I think we're batting pretty poorly right now. I blame Hal. He's not talking enough. Of course. Too quiet. You make yourself a target. We have to be nice. It howls under that the the heat down there, so it it does suck out a lot of your energy too. All right, and I I cc the uh, office hours. Oh, by the way, if you have questions, you can email us as well. Office hours at collabtalk dot com. We're equally and, as useless. Uh, yep. No matter we how you also, get it to us, we we can. We can not answer your questions in a number of formats. <laughs> yes. We can suck uh, so we'll, numerous fronts and in multiple dimensions. Well, it's Tuesday morning there, just about. So uh, they they might be online early and might jump in. Tracy yeah, is this early? What is it over uh, there? Are they what, eight like hours. GMT plus six. Yeah. I want to say so. For me, that's uh, it's going to be ten. Is it that much? Plus six? I... Oh, if only we had a source of all-worldly knowledge at our fingertips. <laughs> Where uh, could that be? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, GMT plus two. So oh, it's just two. Okay, yeah. Seven hours ahead. Yeah. Hmm. So it's probably still still a bit early there. A little bit. Yeah. All right. So we will we'll come back to that. Um, <laughs> I I would be surprised just because they they might so it was a delayed for like a year over a year the two new data centers in South Africa and I thought it was basically making uh, you know South Africa kind of the hub for services because I think the data center that South Africa was served out of prior to that was out of the UK or out of uh, Ireland. I think out of Ireland. Um, Makes sense to start up a data center down there. Yep. And so they did. They launched the two. 
Yeah, it was actually trying to, we were trying to coordinate to have aligned with the opening with uh, Teepers Travel to try and have him down there and, and do some events. And, and uh, yeah, I don't think the timing worked out for everybody, but big deal. Bummer. Uh, all right, let's jump to number 16. Uh, Matic says, uh, today I noticed my shared mailbox is not synced in Outlook 365 anymore. Last mail is almost a month old. Uh, everything looks okay on the web. Any ideas? Why would it not sync? So he's saying his local client? Not syncing because really he's seeing it okay in the web. Yeah. Um, Check your internet connection. Is that what you're saying first? <laughs> well, uh, I, um, his connectivity would be one of the online tools that you could use for that. Also, the support and recovery assistant. Both of those yeah, people check connections sort of stuff. Now, that probably would come out all right if he's getting the rest of his mail. So, uh, unless something happened at the shared mailbox itself, as in everybody's got to have specific permissions, um, that might be the first place to look. Yeah, yeah there's some, uh, some things. We talked something like some similar problems with, uh, with Outlook last week. And some of the things that first comes to mind is, uh, you know, is it, it looking at the client versus the web version? Is there a difference between those? Can you see this? Do you have a shared calendar? Can you see the, the uh, are calendar items updating, but that you're just not receiving emails because those could identify different problems. But obviously something, something is not coming through clearly. Yeah. Um, Hal mentioned, um, recovery assistant and the support tool i have used them as well and they they do a wonderful job posted a link in the uh the chat window that might be one you want to include in the show notes as well um yeah. the other thing you might try just because the <laughs> things get out of whack pretty often for me because i've got so many different email accounts um just try dropping uh that account in outlook reboot your system, add it back and see if you suddenly are synchronizing, you know, if worse comes to worse, if you're not, you know, if there's nothing too valuable that you're worried about losing in terms of configuration or whatnot. Yeah. Back it, in the old days, they'd say just rebuild your OST and all these sorts of things, but really that's, that's overkill these days. <laughs> You think of the, the rate of change that comes across with all of the constant updates. I mean, it's not surprising that something gets out of whack once in a while and you just need to be, you know, check a few different places. I mean, that's the first thing I do always do automatically is I look for those differences between, uh, you know, the, the, the web versus browser versions of tools, um, yeah. turn things off and on again. It's amazing how, how that uh, uh, helps, helps things. But, uh, um, yeah, but then, yeah, a lot of the, the cleanup tools will go in and, and just find those, uh, find those little breaks in logic, something that just got tweaked with an update and writes the wrong and fixes it. But yeah, odd scenarios. They have yeah, a way that, of happening. And if that doesn't solve it, um, Take off and nuke the site from Word. The only way to be sure. I just was going to say that um, maybe it's time that you don't that you stop participating in that shared group. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to tell you something. <laughs> Rise above it. Move beyond it. Be professional. Just you know. Don't just, do what we do. just. Sometimes you're just not wanted. Just just move forward with your life. <laughs> oh man uh, you're an inspiration uh, <laughs> uh, uh, we got a couple more should be, should be like a project management you know 101 like secrets of project management sometimes I just don't want to do those projects I just delete the plan off my system out of sight out of mind <laughs> uh, yeah a couple more um, so number 17, Hassan says, does anyone use teams with AWS? 
Uh, all Microsoft Teams invitations sent to AWS mail are not active, as you can see below. The, we don't have it below. We don't have it here, but no hyperlink Somebody to join the meeting. The um, it, it, yeah, I forgot to attach it there. It, it offers only to accept or refuse the invitation. Uh, with any other mail service, the invitation link is active, and once you click on it, you can join the meeting directly. Yeah, so I'm... I'm not used it with so, AWS, but if it's not I properly... My expectation is that the... So AWS, I assume they've got their own uh, web mail destination. Probably has to do with link handling, um, default link handling. Because, you know, if it's... If you're getting your AWS mail in the Outlook client, the links are the links are the links. I mean, you click on it, it opens. So I'm thinking this is the AWS... Uh, mail client or site um, so you may try that with uh, send one of those AWS uh, mails originated there send it to an Outlook address or a Gmail account um, and see if you can open it there something like that and just you know as a way to try and nail down what might be the root cause futz around that's the official advice that would be in the book as well. <laughs> uh, the second half, futz around. There's a whole section on futzing around. Chapter seven, futz. <laughs> chapter seven. That's right. <laughs> and then chapter eight would be defutzing. Okay, you screwed it up. You like too much futzing. <laughs> right. get you the put your futz in spray. it. Yeah, let's get the defutzing spray and that's right. Pull out a vacuum. It's like a detangler. Yeah, see how, how well that detangler worked for Sean? <laughs> he had long golden locks before that detangler. Too much futzing. You know, my career started in hair care. That tells you something. <laughs> yeah, I saw that picture. You posted the one on uh, Facebook with uh, like, uh, the, the, the mom post, and uh, you had hair. Yeah, I did have hair. I was, uh, yeah, I was gonna comment. It was like this. It was a kind of a touching thing. I didn't want to then poke fun and be Spoiled like, you know, Sean, it. like, don't be alarmed. There's something on your head. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but I, I held back. I'm glad I didn't say that. And th that's saying something. That's impressive. Yeah, just just now I said something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, question eighteen. Uh, Perusian, so we're adding value. We're at so much value today. And this is um, one question, but two. Two questions. Okay. And uh, and this person's hoping that someone can point in the right direction. I have 20 users in my company that use the Office 365 package. The package. <laughs> However, there are a few of them that are on the business basic package so this doesn't come with the office apps however this that's the web only um skew yep. however they have their office package installed already on their laptops so that is the reason they're on the basic platform when they are in outlook and then they try to create new teams meetings using the microsoft teams add-in from the calendar screen they get an error we couldn't schedule the meeting please try again later um, I have updated the Teams app and their Office apps to the latest updates and still encountered this issue. So they have people who went back to business basic. I have a bunch of people. I have one tenant that I maintain for a, um, for a nonprofit that I'm CTO for. Um, we're on business basic and I've had to upgrade a handful of people to uh, E3 just so they can get those client apps, but I'm not sure when they're in Outlook. Now, now there's, uh, so there's one thing that I did experience. I don't know if it'll solve, resolve on this, but something to try is, so we saw that people had the newer version or the updated, the, 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 the larger SKU. Um, they had, or they had the right software installed. However, in admin console, their profiles, they still had the old licenses. License assigned. assigned. And so that would be the first thing that I would go and check is to make sure that they have the right license assigned. Yeah, just buying another set of licenses will 
will not automatically get because I had to do the exact same thing with the yeah. people. That and and installing the later, the newer software doesn't automatically switch that over. The admin still has to go and assign the licenses. Yep. We had that exact sort of a thing that happened. Um, my, uh, my wife uh, went to work for a real estate company. And she got basically an E1 license out of that web only. Um, because... On that machine and have a user profile as well. I've got uh, at that basically Microsoft 365, uh, and I'm running the Insider Fast channel. So it's it's the latest and greatest and ever of everything, you know, fully licensed and all that. But she was not able to connect. It simply would not let her. So that's a permissions issue. Um, her, her license likely would have to be upgraded in an admin from from E1 to E3 or 5 or whatever would happen to be required for those. I believe, believe the idea would be an E3. Yeah, yeah. as of the show. Who knows if we'll have an E3 next week. I remember the E4. Seriously, E4. Had all kinds of skews. I'm waiting for the E3.5 Pro version. Yeah, the super secret E three and a half version. Let's look at part two of the question. Um, some users that are not assigned an Office three six five license in our company are only required to use Teams for meetings. When trying to add them to meetings, we cannot invite them. How do we sign a free Teams license to their email address? A free Teams license. Okay, well, they're not going to show up in your tenant if they're, I mean, you can have an account, but if they don't have a license to uh, assign to them, they might as well not exist uh, for purposes of adding and behavior and anything else. Um, I know we recently, one of the problems we had is somebody had a policy assigned to them and they were removed from the company and something needed to be changed and you know how do you change it for somebody who's been deprovisioned well or they didn't have a license assigned they need a license but uh, i mean maybe this is my ignorance a free teams license yeah there's the free there's the free version of microsoft teams it kind is of works how? Like uh, like slack did in the early days meaning the first person in an organization to go and sign up for the free program is the the like the limited admin capability um, has some control over that. What it's not clear, um, yeah, is uh, uh, so if you've got you know so half the organization and half are using the free, um, whether you still need to go into AD and create you know guest users, create those profiles. Well. So it sounds like they want to try and interact. Do the license automatically give them some kind of guest, pro some kind of profiles or credentials for credentials in the organization? Well, yeah, any any sort of um, license, you know, E1 through E5, any of the basic business licenses, any of those will get you an Active Directory profile, an Azure AD profile. Um, but which then as such they should be invitable into teams under that organization i would certainly think yeah you can invite anybody with an email address they don't need to have teams or not they can click on that and join via the browser right well here's the thing if you do and not have a license have assigned guess. to you right. yeah. if you don't have a license assigned to you um you can be in the um you will have a profile in Azure Active Directory, but without any sort of license, people aren't going to be able to interact with your account for purposes of you know business interactions. Because I mean, those business interactions presume a license, and somebody is has access to the same sort of tools that you do. So if you've yeah. got, I mean, yeah. for instance, I've got admin accounts that I created uh, in some of my tenants back when. Um, the admin tools were not multi-factor aware yet. The solution to that was anybody who wanted to attach to a tenant with PowerShell needed to create a separate account without MFA enabled. 
doesn't need to be licensed. I can use it to sign in, but nothing else can interact with it. So I see that in Azure Active Directory. It's there, and if I wanted to, I could assign a license to it and perhaps start using it for things, but that that's not its purpose. Have we made this messy enough yet? <laughs> Clear as mud, Sean. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just looking through, and I'm not... You know, honestly, I've not played with the free versions. I don't know all of the caveats. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm going to see if I can find... Uh, Yeah, because I I'm trying to remember it was a while back, so who knows what's changed, but it's about a year and a half ago or something. Um, invited somebody that didn't have Teams, and uh, so I actually, you know, created the meeting first, and I went through Outlook, um, and added external users, um, who then joined via the web. I didn't remember any problems around that scenario. They showed up. OK, so I don't know if you've seen this, but I've got this. How do I get access to Microsoft Teams link? Um, it offers a number of questions. I'll put, I'll put this in the uh, chat window. Once I find it. Losing things under my desktop here. So. Um, I, now I'm confused. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Yeah, does uh I mean in this in this case they're in the same organization but they're they don't have the licenses. Would they they would be viewed as an external user, correct? If yeah, they would have to be at it. So this the very first question here is I don't have a Microsoft 365 account. How do I access Microsoft Teams? To use Microsoft Teams, you need a Microsoft 365 account with the appropriate Microsoft 365 license plan listed. Talk to your IT's company IT's administrator to get that account. Um, they get to this. This was me looking for um, free licensing, and this is what came back. So if nothing else, it has a few jump off points. If you're the IT admin, here's the information you need to enable the app and configure things correctly. So it all a lot of it revolves around licensing, which is you know what we're talking about here. Yeah. So yeah, at a minimum, you know, for much of the interaction within the uh, Office 365 admin planes and whatnot, um, you need an account in Azure AD. And then you need some sort of license assigned to you to to be able to interact with the workloads in any capacity. So barring that license assignment, I'm not sure what the alternative is. Yeah, we'll have to do a little more digging around this because I I thought it would treat them essentially like an you know external user. So you just need to make sure that it's an admin. You go in, make sure that that. Uh, your site is your team is enabled for guest access um, and then you go and can invite them and yeah you've got to create the user profiles then you know invite them then you can see them of course you can always do what I mentioned is you can create the meeting and then go via Outlook and invite them email invite only and send that out as well um, but uh, honestly yeah just I've not interacted at all with the free client to know if there's any other step that we're missing here. Um, I can go and dig on that one. I'm interested in knowing. Yeah, huh. this is funny. So they're talking about Microsoft 365 subscriptions and they mentioned the Enterprise E4 for anyone who purchased this plan prior to its retirement. What was that? What was what was it before? Um, so when they went to E1, E3, E5, they got rid of the E4. Um, and I, the E4 had some of the, oh man, boy, we're going back. Uh, I want to see, say that it had some of the, 
new telephony type capabilities that were coming out. This is way back at that point. So we're talking quite some time ago. Actually, let me ask. Let's see. When did Microsoft Microsoft tire the E4? June 13th, 2016. So four years ago. Ancient history. Yeah, especially in this realm. Four years might as well be a lifetime. <laughs> Yeah, by the way, um, Riz almost made it to the tonight's meeting. He was he's awake enough that he responded when we were talking about South, South Africa services. And he said uh, for stream in South Africa, he says, uh, yeah, that question wasn't clear to me. No mention of licensing for the other clients. And I have some questions about E3 that aren't clear. She says can record and cites Microsoft saying not supported, but that doesn't mean not available. So yeah, not supported, not available. That's a good point. It could be there and could be something to do with their organization, not necessarily the you know, service available in the country. But as I said, uh, and, and uh, so thanks, Eric, for um, almost being helpful. Um, <laughs> but uh, reached out to uh, <laughs> Tracy and Alistair and uh see if they could fill us in on uh we love you eric brutality oh oh he knows brutality just you know eric hashtag ice cream ha hashtag basement inside <laughs> joke we don't even remember the uh, the genesis of those fake hashtags but yes no actually i do i remember everything about it <laughs> jeez what <laughs> uh, we got a few minutes left. Uh, I don't see any other questions posted. If there's anybody, we've got um, six, seven minutes left. Anything else going on? Anything else going on this week, gents? Hmm. Anything exciting? <laughs> uh, subsisting. Online events happening. Yeah, what are you going to do with like you have all this time that's opened up now that you're not building your computer? Uh, I am still putting some things back together, but, um, yeah. it's, yeah, it, it will open up, but I'm getting caught up on all the things I put off to build the computer. You know, it's like that whole vacation thing, but not really a vacation. So I've got, well, I, uh, I, I feel like I'm right there with you. Cause I swapped out, I had, uh, some, uh, you know, fans that were making noises. I swapped out three of them with fans that light up so now just the whole half my office glows green so it's nice yeah it's nice christian Soothing. i think you will appreciate this Ugh. your your merce the man purse this is a bag <laughs> yes it is of, a bag oh wait there's more full of dvds oh nice Blu-rays. I went nuts when I went to um, nice Best Buy. Yeah. So coming to a plex the, near you soon. The, my my wife as we were cleaning out the garage. I have I think I don't know. There the, I have about twenty five hundred CDs, and uh, so there are in these the the, the uh, you know the the plastic uh, Costco boxes yeah. that were out on the, the shelves and she's like why don't you just go rip all of these and you know to which i did did that with my eyebrows <laughs> like yeah i've got time for that she's like why don't you rip them then you can get rid of these and sell them i'm like okay one you know there's a lot of them there's no the street value is not there it's the it, it, it it's music it's uh and so like uh, it's stuff that i absolutely love um Oh, John is going to join us. Would you even have the storage space for him? Not no, it's not today. The, the data. Oh, what? For the shelves? John, no, the are you there? Hmm. I let him in, but I don't know where he is. All right, sorry. Maybe what were you saying, John? I was saying for um, whatever form the files take after you rip it. No I, no, I no, I don't. 
uh, so that, that's part of it. But the other, I mean, I do want to go through, there's, uh, I'd say a third of my collection is not available on any of the streaming services. Um, yeah. I mean, as you know, it's, it's, uh, it's frustrating about movies. I went, I constantly going and searching and I still have an idea for an app that searches across the major services. And this is an app that's missing. Why doesn't somebody build it? Don't tell me it exists because it doesn't. I've looked. But where you can go to one place and search for a movie and it comes up and it says, hey, it's here on Amazon. I click once and it then logs me in and I can go and then start watching it. I just want, uh, you know, something that uh, like if I go to if I find it, it says, hey, it's available on Hulu and Amazon and Netflix. Like, yeah, but it's all they're all paid. Like, tell me, no, it's not available. Um uh, you know, put it down in a separate category for for purchase or for streaming. You know, with 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 purchase. But I want to know specifically because I'm a you know paid user of Netflix, Hulu, and and, and Prime, uh, and a couple other services. Thank goodness we got rid of the old cable bill. <laughs> <laughs> transformed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I feel I feel transformed. Uh, <laughs> But I, I want one app where I can go and search for a movie. It comes up and it says, hey, look, you can purchase it on Amazon. You can purchase it through Hulu, but you get it. It's it's available this month on Netflix and then click on it and it will then go to a login screen or automatically already have me logged in, authenticated, and, and I start watching it. I mean, why does that app not exist? The APIs are available. You can go you know, for each of those services to find out what's available. Um, I'll give you a very but, simple answer. Yes. Licensing. Licensing to be able to do that, to even search? No, um, to make the content. Nobody's going to build it just so you can search. They're going to build a search engine to support a service or um, something they can make money on. And you know what the state of licensing is in the music industry and the movies. It's yeah. abysmal. I went through the process um, years ago of ripping all my CDs, though. So I, I do know, you know, nowadays, especially with this, this was before PCs were quite so quick. Um, I would just be doing work, and I would pop them in and pop them in, and yeah, it's you can get through because I've got, I'm like I did you, the I've same. Got thousands I did the of same. CDs. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a couple terabytes of music. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's on this machine now. And uh, and now that I have, since all of my CDs are in crates, and I occasionally f I, I rediscover that, oh, yeah, I've got those those albums recorded, and I'll find them. Of course, it's not as high quality as I would do now, um, but um, they're, they're there. Um, and I'll go and I'll search and find some obscure thing that's still not available on any service. But even mainstream artists that I like, like Duran Duran, there's three albums that are uh, yeah, that are not there because they switched labels a couple times when yeah. they kind of, uh, you know, lost their their coolness for there for a while. But they're hip. They're now. Yeah. Or at least yesterday. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so that's that's something I'll do. Maybe I'll do that over the weekend. I'll rip all twenty five hundred of them and have them out there about the same time you rip all those movies <laughs> yeah it's it'll be a, a little bit of a project yeah. but good night all right well gentlemen we're, we're at the uh we're at the time the time so, uh, yeah the time Not morris day and the so i sure hope we help somebody today out of these two hours it's iffy um, that's a long shot, man. I feel pretty proud week after week, like we, you know, that we were able to go in. We know a lot of the answers, but t today was just kind of an off day for us. Man, if only the person who picked the questions chose a little more carefully. Yeah. <laughs> or if, if, uh, yeah. Or, or if Riz showed up. Oh, yeah, I didn't get totally. damn Riz. <laughs> Frickin' Riz. You abandoned us. <laughs> He's him. not here. Yeah, but a hell in a hand basket. I did think about that though. I there were some that I specifically put on there, and I and I thought, you know, I, I'm sure none of us know. Neil will know. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's fair. Yeah. Anyway. Can't know who 
<laughs> show up. Anyway. So I blame Riz and Neil. <laughs> yeah. Well, for what it's worth, I think it's a sound strategy. It just means we're, you know, unless we have a full complement, we're not, we don't stand a fighting chance of getting everything on the list, but we can yeah, take a crack at it and have fun doing so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we entertained ourselves and that's really, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. <laughs> well, we'll be back. Uh, yeah. So for th those that haven't seen, so we, uh, I will go through tomorrow and I'll have both of the videos, uh, combined. So we'll be back next Monday for the live sessions, the live streams at, uh, 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Pacific. But I'll have tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, evening. I got, I, I have to do some work during the day. Um, <laughs> But we'll compile those together. You can find that out on YouTube, out on the Collab Talk YouTube page. You can also go to BuckleyPlanet.com and you can see all the, the 21 episodes that are currently out there. And every one of them I go through and painstakingly go through and do a link list of every topic that we cover across two hours and provide links. So you don't have to watch two hours of video. You can. We encourage it. <laughs> You know, remember you office know, hours or uh, office hours at collabtalk.com. Yep. For other you questions. How? What were you saying? I said slaves over a hot editor. He does. Yes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, no, it's it's actually it's not that bad. I use child labor uh, to put it together, so it right. works out. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there we just kidding. Was Learn some lessons from yeah. Kathy Gifford. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, too soon, I think. <laughs> out of, out of respect, for, out of respect for Regis, we should not beat up on Kathy. <sighs> yeah, I did hear about Regis. That was too bad. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I need next to to Baby Yoda. I need like a little Regis Philbin statue so yeah all right we're going away now yeah I'm on that note babbling yeah on the regis note all right thanks a lot guys we'll see you later wonderful week everyone bye bye